Hello everyone. One of the most important subject in statistical inference, which is hypothesis testing. So let me write that down first. You know, um, when a person is convicted, not convicted, but uh, um, arrested for something and goes to the court, um, this person doesn't immediately go to jail, right? We get, a, we get a verdict. And what happens there at the court is um, there's a lawyer, there's a prosecutor, and while things are going, um, what's being assumed that is this person is innocent. That is our assumption. And the prosecutor stacks up the evidence to say the otherwise, right? That is basically the same process in statistical inference and hypothesis testing. Um, so you're gonna see what I mean by that later, but let me write down the key terms first. P-value. Let me stop here. Now, we've seen some examples for the statistical inference. I think one of them was like the presence approval rate. Um, I guess we can use that example again, right? Um, but before getting there, let's also talk about um, the uncertainty of the estimate. To recall, like, I was telling you to imagine yourself as an employee of a survey firm, right? And they're interested in the overall approval rate of the president, and you're an employee, so you're getting out, getting the survey, uh, you came back and reported that you're using some estimator, right? Uh, the approval rate was 61%. And then the company sent you out again, collected another sample, and this time, that was the first try, it was 49%, right? So you're kind of losing confidence here because the number is very different from the first one. One quantity I emphasized there was how varying the quantities are, right? The variance of the estimator. Statistical, like in hypothesis testing, you're kind of um, expressing this directly, right? So say you got this estimate, um, you want to know if that's sufficiently different from 50%, right? Right now with this number only, right, alone, uh, you would say they're different, but your opinion might change if your second survey outcome says 42, right? So really, it's kind of important how varying that is. So, here are some of the things. Um, null hypothesis is something that you want to reject, okay? So in the previous example, say, I would assume that the presidential approval rate is 50% and I'm trying to stack up data to see if I can reject the idea, right? So in this case, the idea that you want to reject or you want to see if data can reject it, the idea is called null hypothesis. And this is the symbol, H0. Okay, that is called null hypothesis. And there is alternative hypothesis. I'm trying to reject the null, right? So you may say it's over 50%. That's one possible alternative hypothesis. You may say it's 
smaller than 50%? Or you may say it is not 50%. It's, I don't know the exact number, but it's not 50%. So that's one of the alternative hypotheses. Um, these two are kind of different, but I, I'll get there later. What's important in here is that your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis have to spend the entire sample space, which means, except for this one, like for this one, if you reject the null, the alternative is automatically true. That is what spanning means. That's because, recall that court example or, or analogy, you're assuming that this person is innocent. That is your null hypothesis, right? Something that you want to reject with evidence. And if you stack up enough evidence, um, right, prosecutors usually have some evidence, but sometimes it's not enough to convict this person, right? Uh, a judge might say, oh, it's only circumstantial. It's not enough. It doesn't really place this person there. Um, so you will actually have to accumulate sufficient amount of evidence to have the power to reject the innocence right hypothesis. And rejecting that no hypothesis in the court automatically means that this person is guilty. Right? That is exactly the framework here in the statistical analysis. Right? So I, when I see the content of this course, I found it really interesting and appealing to me. So I enrolled to the class as it is provide the foundations to the uh, data science as like uh, to pursue or to better understand the courses of data sciences. For uh, about the course, like uh, for, for some extent, I find it really difficult. Uh, as I mentioned, the course content earlier, the statistical inference, it's always uh, like a study area, which is very like tough for me. We may have like some concepts or some uh, things we know already from our previous studies, like the quantitative method, there is also a core course for, our, for us. We uh, also like discussed or learned some concepts there, but this course specifically gives the practical or the real applications of those concepts. The professor like teach us how we can use these things in the real research and the real a world context. I really find his style of teaching uh, like very interactive and he, he made the concepts like in a very easy way. Everything he take it to the whiteboard and explain it really well. I've structured and uh, gain a deep understanding of key uh, statistical concepts uh, uh, fundamental for data scientists such as probability theory, uh, behavioral estimators uh, and so on. Uh, what is more as my uh, research interest lies in machine learning application and data analysis. I've learned uh, how to better understand and interpret data characteristics in model development. I like his teaching style because uh, he explains rather complex topics in clear and well-organized way, making it easier to understand difficult topics. I definitely recommend this class for students, especially for those who are interested in data science or such classes as machine learning or text analysis, because indeed it's a basics for such kind of classes. Okay, so if you don't have any other questions, we'll wrap up here. I'll see you on Thursday.